Palpation should ideally follow inspection and they are useful to confirm and better define findings picked up on inspection. During cold season, warm hands are a must when examining a child. During palpation, evaluate any swellings, any region of pain or tenderness, look for the position of trachea and the cardiac apex and impulse, look for asymmetry of chest movements and evaluate the tactile vocal fremitus. Now this is a swelling which is empyema necessitans and this the fluid in this swelling is communicating with the pleural fluid and as you can see during cough it is getting more prominent. Pain uh, and tenderness in chest wall can be because of injury, it can be because of inflammation. The pain can be muscular which can be easily elicited by uh, putting some pressure while palpating. The pain can be uh, because of tender uh, painful costochondral junctions which can be confirmed while palpating. The pain can be because of metastatic uh, spread of uh, malignancies to ribs. Uh, in adults, uh, although it is uncommon in children, herpes zoster before the appearance of rash can present as pain. Uh, in children, it is uncommon, but yes, those who are immunocompromised or those who have uh, who have received chemotherapeutic drugs, uh, this pain can be there. Evaluation of the position of trachea and the cardiac apex or impulse helps us define the presence and extent of tracheomediastinal shift. Now, determine the position of the trachea by placing the second and the fourth fingers on the two sternal attachments of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then gently pass the third finger over the trachea to assess its relationship to these two fixed landmarks. However, in young babies, the trachea may be easier to palpate with single finger over the sternal notch. Now let us look at the position of the trachea. The trachea is normally either centrally placed or slightly deviated towards the right. The child should be in such a position that there is no deviation due to asymmetric neck position or the body posture. So to evaluate the position of cardiac apex or impulse, first localize the suprasternal notch. From there as you go down, uh, you will palpate a very rigid uh, lateral structure which is the angle of Louis. Just lateral to the angle of Louis is the second rib and um, uh, just below the second rib you can palpate the second intercostal space. Now subsequently you can uh, count the rest of the spaces to better define the position of cardiac apex. The tracheomediastinal shift can be due to abnormality in the thoracic structures where the shift is primarily mediastinal and trachea is less informed. For example, scoliosis and large left ventricle or the sternal deformity. The shift can also be due to lung or pleural abnormalities. The, these can lead to an ipsilateral deviation that is uh, the pull effect which can be due to uh, collapse uh, uh, and fibrosis or it can lead to deviation uh, of the mediastinum to the contralateral side which is the push effect. Now, this can happen in uh, pneumothorax and pleural effusions. Evaluate the symmetry of the chest expansion by placing the palms on either side of the thorax at the level of the nipples and gently touching the thumb in the midline. The thumb will separate during inspiration and approximate during expiration. This helps to compare the difference in chest excursion on both sides. A measuring tape can objectively measure the difference in inspiration and expiratory phase. The normal chest expansion is 3 to 5 centimeters in older children and less in younger children and infants. Tactile vocal fremitus is usually practiced in older children, uh, but even in younger children, especially when they are crying, it's a very useful technique. The basic principle is to palpate sound vibrations generated when the child is speaking in a low pitched voice or crying. So for evaluation of tactile vocal fremitus, books would say that ask the child to repeatedly say 99 or a phrase like 111. If the child cannot do either of these, then uh, you can ask him to simply count. In a young child, especially when they are crying, you can palpate for these vibrations and uh, evaluation for tactile vocal fremitus can be done. So some uh, examiners use the ulnar border of the hand, some use the flat of the hand, some use the fingertips. So all of them are almost equally sensitive. It's about uh, practicing a particular technique. Ask the child to count numbers since it is difficult to elicit the classic 99 repeatedly. Feel for the vibrations with both hands placed on either side of the chest to 
assess asymmetry if there is any. Tactile fremitus is decreased when there is either air or fluid in the pleura which impairs transmission of sound vibrations and this can happen because of pneumothorax, hydrothorax, biothorax, hemothorax etc. Atelectasis or collapse also decreases fremitus. This tactile fremitus appears increased in consolidation of the lobe. Thank you for watching this video. Please help us improve the content by commenting in the comment section or emailing at the link given below, especially regarding the length of this video, anything which can be removed or anything which can be added or any other comment and suggestion. Thank you so much.